welcome everybody to our webinar today. Uh, we would like to introduce um, our yeah, new services within Euro practice on fan out wafer level packaging. And uh, we will offer that as a multi-project wafer run. Um, I think everybody of you knows that very well for um, chip manufacturing and um, yeah, new is now that we will offer this also for a package technology, a quite advanced um, package option. So, okay, so let me start. Um, um, I will say some um, short words to Fraunhofer IZM. Maybe not everybody knows us in that quite large Fraunhofer society. And then I will show a short introduction what is Fanout wafer level packaging and maybe why it is interesting um, to look into that package technology. And uh, yeah, we will share half of this uh, with Markus. So you already uh, learned from the um, introduction from Thomas that I'm more or less responsible for the first part of the story for the assembly and encapsulation. And Markus is responsible for the second half, um, the redistribution layer um, for that technology. Um, we will show you a bit more on the multi-project wafer approach and also um, what kind of service we will offer uh, here in the frame of your practice. So some words to Fraunhofer IZM. So IZM stands for Zuverlässigkeit und Mikrointegration. So that is reliability and microintegration. So within that quite uh, large Fraunhofer society, we are responsible for the packaging the main focus. So we are located in Berlin. We have uh, a branch lab in Dresden and uh, quite new also in Cottbus. Uh, and you get an idea. So we have quite a lot of lab space here with uh, a lot of equipment also with very new equipment. And uh, yeah, we have two main technology lines so that one is dealing with wafer level integration. That is where Markus comes from. And I am from the substrate level integration. So where we do have any kind of assembly and encapsulation technologies with a focus also on embedding. And um, yeah, for us also the fan out process is an embedding process. Um, so these technology lines are backed by also two other departments. One is dealing with um, design, electrical design, uh, with uh, focus on RF, but also on sensor systems. And uh, the last uh, department is dealing on reliability and sustainability and uh, is uh, also supporting our technology activities. And uh, as mentioned, or uh, as we are Fraunhofer, you see also the um, direct industry projects are uh, very important for us. So we are uh, forced to do also um, projects directly together with industry. And of course, the other uh, important part is um, funded projects here. And uh, you, you see also some figures here from, from us about our turnover um, for the last years. Okay, I would like to start with um, a packaging technology roadmap and uh, maybe you know that quite well. So, of course, there is a lot of um, packaging developments also during the last year. So if you look to the left side here, um, then of course we see a clear trend from single chip packaging to multi-chip packaging for system and package, also combining different components. Um, silicon dyes with passive components, um, maybe with sensors. And uh, we already see that fan out wafer level packaging um, exists since a couple of years. It is introduced in high volume manufacturing in um, Asia, but also we have uh, facilities here in Europe. And um, of course, we also see the trend to 3D stacking, package stacking, chip stacking, and so on. But it's interesting also to have a look in the future. And we see that we even have more demand requirements for heterogeneous integration. And it's more heterogeneous. So, and also the package gets more functionality. And um, that is interesting to see, like uh, integration of shielding on top of the housing the 
encapsulation, for example. We do run a lot of um, R&D projects in the field of antenna and package integration, how to integrate an antenna on the package, on the molds, um, yeah. And uh, the same is also for thermal concepts. Here's really a high demand. And um, I showed that to see if we are looking into fan out wafer level package. And this is a quite nice package who has potential to fulfill these demands. Even if we cannot um, offer all of these things in, in the frame of a multi-project run, but at least it shows the potential for the uh, technology and why is it worth to learn more about that te technology and also see the advantages here for maybe future developments. Um, the background of fan out wafer level tech technology, of course, is fan in wafer level packaging. So that is what we know since. 25 years. So where we started to work on flip chip, on CSPs, on area array um, components. And the idea here was to have, yeah, fine pitch wire bond pads at the chip edges, but for a direct chip attach, I think the pads are too small. And um, then the idea came up, okay, I reroute that without touching the CMOS process. I add an additional layer based on a polymer with copper traces to route these fine pitch pads to area array pads. And that then allows a direct face down assembly with solder balls on the printed circuit board. What we have seen the last 10, 15 years now is that dies are getting smaller and numbers of IOs were increasing. So in the end, there was not enough space area on the die for routing. And that one, it was the idea not to increase chip size again, but to add something lower cost around the die and use that for um, redistribution. And that was more or less a basic idea of fan out. So we now have a mold compound that the die is embedded in, and then we use the same technology, a redistribution layer based on a polymer layer of a dielectric layer in combination with copper traces. And um, yeah, this has started as a single chip package. Maybe you know all that uh, basic invention was done by Infineon with the EWLB and Motorola at the same time for the RCP package type. But meanwhile, we have learned, oh, there is much more um, advantages than having maybe a redistribution layer and a relaxed um, pitch for assembly on substrates. And um, of course we can have uh, a good thermal concept, uh, even back grinding into the silicon um, is possible that you can directly attach a heating on the backside, for example. We see very good um, reliability results, better than we see for standard wafer level CSPs. Um, but uh, one main driver we also see here in Europe at the moment, and maybe that is also one of the targets, perhaps also here in Europe practice, is that is more or less the shortest interconnect you can get. So it's a substrate-less package. It's only a plated beer for the connection of the chip. So we have very good RF and electrical performance. And that is also what we see, what drives us at the moment. Coming back to that antenna and package solutions, for example, so that is um, um, one of the big advantages we see here also at the moment. And of course, there is quite a high degree of freedom and package design. So you even can change the die and keep the package outline. Um, with a future vision, of course, you can also add two dies or multiple dies, even passive components and so on. So there's really a lot of design freedom and uh, maybe I'm also interested to see maybe what kind of designs we will get. We have done one test run also already for the um, fan out where we have just given um, design holes and got um, design specs. So that is also interesting to see what people um, designing out of, out of these kits here. Um, maybe you also heard um, there are different fan out um, approaches or technologies. And um, 
what we are offering here is an mold first face down approach because we think it is uh, well suitable for an heterogeneous integration, but also for a um, multi project run because we don't need any chip preparation. We can take the dye as it comes with an aluminum pad and we can package it. We have that very short interconnect, as I mentioned, only a plated wire to connect the dye. Um, for upgrading, it's easy to heterogeneous integration, different suppliers we can put in a package, but also on a wafer. Uh, we work with known good dyes and maybe not so important for here, but also package stacking with the integration of, of, of years in the package as possible. What we have to say, of course, um, it is not um, a hundred percent um, yield process. And that is also maybe where you have to be aware of, and that is maybe different to a multi-project chip run. So if we make a failure in the RDL, then we also will lose the diet. So it's not possible than simply setting up another run and say, okay, it takes a bit longer, but uh, we will do it again because you will deliver us dice, of course, for packaging. And if we do a failure in the RDL, then we also will lose um, the diet inside. That is a bit our risk here, uh, which we have to overcome that we have or that we use also processes with a high yield. Um, maybe just to add to say, there are different other process flows, um, quite well known is also that phase up approach, because that is what TSMC is doing for the Apple processor. Um, for example, here, um, here we have a small interconnect, a caterpillar bump, that means that you cannot have this process on, on single dies because you need chip wafer preparation for that approach here. So that is nothing, I think, which is suitable really for a multi-project uh, run. And uh, that is the same for an RDL first approach, which is also, in my opinion, more in flip chip or an advanced flip chip on flex, um, because here you really need flip chip bumping and assembly approaches. So again, that is why we offer here for that approach, the mode first face down approach. And to add that is in high volume manufacturing. So what we are offering here also for materials, design guides is close, but you will find in also in high volume, for example, at AMCO, also here in Europe, but also um, at STATS, for example, or at Powertech, so for the big OSATs in Asia. Of course, it's not leading edge design rules, which we offer here, because um, we have to handle different dyes with different challenges also a bit. And of course, we would minimize um, the risk for a low yield. And that is a bit why we have uh, not the leading edge design rules, uh, which we can offer here in that uh, multi-project run that is different if you would go for a prototyping run only for one customer or what we would do in an R&D project. Um, a quick introduction to the process flow. So we got dice simulated um, from, from the customers. And uh, first of all, we have to build a reconfigured wafer. That is how it, how it is called. So what we do is we assemble the dice face down on an intermediate carrier. Here we have an, um, an adhesive tape, which can be re released later. So we place face down the dice on that carrier that must be with a quite high accuracy. Then we go to an overmolding process. So that is done by compression molding. So the material is quite well known. It's in highly filled epoxy resin, very stable, very well known. And that forms a wafer. So in our case here also, we will work on 200 millimeter wafer size. Um, I think we don't uh, think on high volumes and uh, that is, I think, sufficient from, from the wafer sizes we will handle. Um, we will not have all dyes on one wafer, so we will also, um, let's say, distribute the risk um, to, to multiple wafers so that um, even if we maybe have uh, problems or defects on one wafer, we will not, um, uh, or we can just rework that on, on other wafers. 
Um, after molding, um, there is a temperature step to release that we configured wafer from the carrier. So in the end, then you have a 200 millimeter mold wafer where dice are embedded and the active side of a dice digging out of that wafer. And then we will add the RDL, the redistribution layer that starts with a polyimide layer always. And then there is a couple routing um, with a seed layer um, and then plating process that is done in a semi-additive process. Marcos will tell a bit more on that uh, later. So we built up multiple layers. In our case here, we offer two metal layers for routing. And uh, we're finishing with a third polyimide layer that is more or less also the solder mast at the end. And we will add um, this solder ball placement. So of course, in this case, it will be um, a uniform solder ball size. So that is also something we have fixed in the design guidelines. And finally, of course, we will simulate the dies and offer then simulated packages. Okay, so just that you get an idea about equipment. Um, that is more or less my uh, last slide here, uh, which I will present. Um, so I'm responsible for the assembly and embedding. And you see we have uh, latest equipment here for high precision assembly. And um, what you also need is metrology because you have to measure the die positioning um, or you also have to adapt that to have minimized die shifting during the processing. We have uh, different molding options for forming that reconfigured wafer. And of course, there is also special debonding equipment, uh, which we are using for debonding the molded wafer from the carrier. So you see that is all quite new equipment and that is also production like equipment. So, and that again is a bit, um, uh, supporting that uh, what we are offering here is quite close, but you also will find uh, in volume manufacturing. And now I would hand over to Markus for the second part of the presentation. And I think you will share by yourself, Markus. So I will stop here. Yeah. So, thank you. So I hope you can see me and also the slides. Short feedback, Tanya. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I will take over. Um, so after the wafer generation, we will do um, the routing, the distribution layer, where we're using um, the uh, fan in line, fan in and fan out line at IZM with uh, high volume manufacturing tools. Um, so production like tools, where we're starting with a, a sputtering layer for the SAP process, uh, a resist um, coating, and after that lithography free structuring, where we have options of using mask liner as well as all the I systems for individual packages, like we have a multiple uh, in, multi, in, in the MPW run. Um, then we have a galvanic deposition uh, with etching of the seed layer. And after that, um, deposition of the dielectric, the polymer dielectric, which is a photodielectric, will be exposed, developed, and cured. So that's the flow for realized one, um, one um, layer. Um, a short, uh, a little bit more explanation of what kind of routing or process we're using. So we're using to realize the routing on, on top of the fan out package um, a semi-additive process, as I explained uh, in the steps uh, in the slide before, where we have the benefit that we really uh, accurate fits um, design features or the, the sizes of the lines um, uh, uh, from the design, just here for a comparison. Um, this is a picture from a presentation from TSMC of a classical um, organic substrate where they're using subtractive technology with rough surface, copper surface, and sub subtractive etching uh, um, of the features. And here's a picture of a four layer um, routing, which is done at IZM, where we're using SAP. Uh, with well-defined features, especially here a differential line uh, with 30 micrometer um, line width where we um, realized feature accuracy of plus minus one micrometer. 
Um, so that makes that technology and also that package very attractive for high frequencies because less uh, roughness of the features themselves. Yeah, um, based on that, some outlines we, we will offer uh, in that MPW run. Um, we have copper line with down to 10 micrometer, which is um, realized in that semi-additive process. And um, we can realize with the photodielectric wire diameters in the range of 35, down to 35 micrometer. And um, as Tanya mentioned before, um, in that mold, uh, that uh, chip first um, approach, uh, we can handle um, dyes which are not special prepared, have just um, aluminum pads like they are normally for wire bonding um, used, where we have here um, the design rules we need a pad size larger than 70 micrometer and the pad, pad pitch, so it's typing failure of 80 micrometer. So here is a picture of such a kind of um, yeah, top view of the multi-layer routing. And here you see also an example where we have two dies embedded um, with aluminum pads um, regarding the small feature, um, bio features and the accuracy. We can realize also slightly shifts of the dies um, and compensate that. Yeah, so how how is the process flow or how the customers can participate on our multi-project fanout platform? Here's an example. So at first we, we defined um, the outlines, so uh, the packaging size, which is in that first early access run defined by uh, 10 by 10 millimeter in the package outlines. Um, then we, we offered the customers a design rule uh, also, the parameters of the material we, we characterized, um, where here's an example in a pr uh, process, we have uh, a multi-project with six different designs uh, based on the design rules, um, uh, the, the uh, RDL routing of the package was done by the customers for different applications here, 60 gigahertz, 120, 50 um, gigahertz and uh, so on for different purposes. So here you can see in the background the six different designs. Also integrated some antennas in, in some applications. Um, we also here done a term simulation. Then was the wafer generation with, uh, with the assembly of the different dies. And then on wafer level, uh, in parallel, the RDL routing was done. Also here in that case, a two-layer routing with a signal layer and also a sheeting layer. Where uh, the way you see here, the final wafer with uh, the redistribution before it was diced. So um, how uh, how the customers can work on? So um, we have design routes for creating. Um, the uh, routing, uh, the routing layer for the package. So firstly, uh, we have to assign an NDA um, between customer and us to verify that your design um, is be saved, uh, not giving to assert, as well as the design rules um, uh, are uh, uh, saved with that. Yeah, with that, then we have the documentation where you are able to create um, your um, individual designs for your applications. Um, here's some outline of the package in that early access run. We have defined that this package will offer two copper routing layers. Uh, we have uh, bumps uh, with a pitch of 50, 500 micrometer. The package size is, the size is fixed at 10 by 10 millimeters and uh, with a thickness of 450 uh, micrometer and the dye which come from the um, customers um, can be have uh, a range of 1.5 by 7 millimeters in, in x and y direction so in different variations are possible and that dye has to be uh, delivered in a dye thickness between 200 and 300 micrometer. 
more details are also defined in our um, design rules, just a short outlook. Coming to um, the timeline, so our first early access run is planned um, to start uh, next year, um, where we have a design freeze at the 11th of April. That means um, the customers has to deliver their uh, routing design, so also the packaging um, routing design uh, as GDS or DXF file. Um, then we starting a phase where we're doing a design rule check and also generating the multiple wafer design uh, where we joined all the packages and the designs together. Then uh, the next milestone is the delivery of the dies uh, until the 27th of May. Um, all dies has to be delivered by uh, the customers and uh, that will be the start of the multi uh, project wafer lot so and we have around four months um, uh, for the processing so the assembly and the uh, redistribution layer and here's the target fab out which is the first of september <clears throat> So, and also as an outlook, um, we just started now with that fan out um, offer uh, at the Euro practice. Um, we plan the second run, which is yet, of course, on request. We have to, to, to look how is um, the, uh, the demands of that, which is planned to have it end uh, of the year or maybe uh, or end of the year as next year where here the dates, uh, the milestone is the 28th of November, where the packaging design freeze has happened. And also here is a design check um, phase of six weeks around. Um, we plan that all dice has to be delivered till the end of the year, that we can start with the lot uh, at the beginning of next year, uh, so 23. Uh, and also around four months uh, to the, uh, for the fab out at the 30th of March. So that's about um, the timeline. So coming um, to the costs. So um, the costs are aligned on the number of packages which are um, demanded. So we have here three different ranges. So for 20 to 30 chips, or packages, so that means in that uh, uh, case, um, the, the prices uh, of 12,000 euro for 30 to 50 chips and packages, we have 17,000 euros, and for 50 up to 100, it's 23,000 euro. Also here remarked, um, if we need uh, additional design rule checks, so iterations um, to fit um, the design rules we got from the customers to the packaging and the rules, an additional fee per additional um, loop is of 750 euro. And also here, um, if um, there's, that multi project is also open for non euro practice members, where we have here an additional charge of 20% uh, of that price as see above. Yes. So, and um, that's uh, uh, the, yeah, the new offer we have in your practice, um, the multi-project fan out. Here's just an example also in the background of such a multi-project um, 200 millimeter fan out package. And uh, yeah, we are now would be delighted um, to answer questions 